This is the best way to get yourself routine steady sales across the board, no matter what is going on. Hey, it's done. Today we're going to look at a few things we sold as well as talk about where a large chunk, the bread and butter, the main chunk of our business comes from. So I'm just pulling some things out and this right here, this is one of my buttons, uh, catch-all bins, I guess you'd call it. It changes from time to time, but this is a purchase. I think I spent 15 on all of these together and I just sold one. I just listed them last night. I sold one for 40 bucks. These are from the 1901 um, Pan American Exposition in Buffalo. World's Fair, one of them was marked. They're all from the same company, same size. This one was marked. So in just selling one of these, I'm gonna get all of my money back, make a profit, pay for my time in the whole works. I, to photo these, it took me maybe six minutes or so to take photos of all of these items. I, I think there's like 27 of these total. Again, 15 bucks or so bought them for sold one for 40 so these sorts of things get us a lot of money each one of these is basically a different state uh, as you can see right there so there's a bunch of them there's i don't know again 25 26 states in here typical i i buy a lot of things like this pay very little for it in big bulk, and then I break it up and sell it that way. Here's another really interesting item here, and I'm not 100% sure what the product is, what London Purple is. I'm assuming it's some sort of bluing or maybe like a um, blackening shoe polish or something along that line. This is a chunk of a label. This isn't even the whole label. This is just part of it. Just so it, somebody just trimmed out the bug itself. It's a very interesting piece. This dates to about 1870. Uh, we took 45 for it. I think I listed it for 68.50 or 62.50, somewhere in that range. It was up for about five days before it sold. Now I had an offer. I turned out an offer of I think 30 bucks on this one. So I don't mind waiting. So here's a few more going out. And these are honestly the secret to our success. What these are are multi-item purchases. Two cards here, one on this side, one on this side, two cards here, two cards here. Now what's also cool about these three, again, two, 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 is that each one was purchased by a different person. Not only were they purchased by a different person, but the repeat business. These folks have been coming back to us for years, years. And this is just from one specific day for just a few hours where three different people in a four or five hour time span bought a couple of different items. It happens all the time. This is a huge, big push for most of what we sell. I don't mind selling one-offs. This one went for 200. This one's 25, 34, uh, 35, 15, 20, 22. I mean, it, it's still a lot of money, the individual stuff. But once someone starts buying from you and you keep putting new inventory up in the niches and categories that they buy in, they're going to keep coming back. You're going to make good money. The more repeat business you get, as well as the more multi-item purchases you get, the better you will do. You will grow and grow and grow. I started off with one person buying two items, three items, four items. Then we worked up, now we have two. Then we worked up, we have three, we have four. There's days when there's six, seven different people buying multiple items from us, and those six or seven people have been buying from us for multiple years. So we've got customers going back 10 plus years these days, and they keep with us as long as we, we do the right thing and we keep getting new items in the niches that they are in. If you're not getting items in the niches or the categories they collect, and they're not going to keep coming back. So if you start down the road of trying to build repeat business and multi-item purchases, you know, you got to stick to it. You could lose, you know, some of your standing if you're not getting new items. You're not going to, you know, uh, be bringing them back in. Value-wise, this one here is around 65. This is 34. And this one is around 50 bucks. So, I mean, it's over 100 bucks just from three different people. No big deal. Um, it adds up really quickly. And I haven't even wrapped everything. I've got a whole bunch more stuff still to ship out. Just since yesterday at, uh, what time did mail out yesterday? 12 o'clock, I think, is when I stopped. 
Now, those are just a few different items we sold. The biggest factor, though, in getting routine, repeat, constant sales across the board is to have repeat customers. If you build up a base of people coming back and buying from you, it doesn't matter about getting new people in because you already have people there that will come back every week, every two weeks, a couple times a month, whatever the case may be. Every single day of the week, pretty much, that I can remember in you know modern memory, we've sold at least a couple items to the same person. And in most cases, it's also someone who's bought from us many times before. Now, with the ones I showed you today, where there's three different sales with multiple items to three different repeat customers, there was actually four. When I went to print up the invoices for those, there was two others that they bought on two different times in the same, same day. Like two hours later, they bought another one. So those were combined. I refunded the difference on them as well. It is, again, someone who's bought from me, I don't know, many, many times. Out of those three sales with two items in each sale, each one of those, again, being a different person, they've all been buying from us for, geez, two, three, four, five years, multiple years, all three of them. The fourth one, I think they bought one or two other times from us in real recently, like in the last two or three weeks. Once you have the customer, you're all set. All you got to do is keep them. How do you keep a customer when you're selling stuff like that? You keep replenishing or adding new stuff to those niches, to the categories that they buy stuff in. It's all there is to it. As long as you keep listing new stuff, spread stuff out, add stuff at least once a week, twice a week to those specific categories, you're going to get them back. They will favorite you. The whole works. I don't send out notices when I put something up either. I want them to come back. I just tell them there's too many people that ask. It gets to be where I, I don't want any favoritism or anything else like that. We put the stuff up. Most people just come back and check if you'd like. Save our store as a favorite and come back and check once a week or whatever the case may be. Obviously, I word it a little differently than that, but that's the gist of, of the, the statement I send back to them. It works. We get a lot of followers. A lot of people come back and routinely buy from us. We've had people buying from us, the same people, for 10 years or more, routinely, on and on and on, constantly, every year. They're in certain niches. They're in certain categories. And every time I list a bunch of new items in those specific niches or categories or things that I know that they will buy, they're back every time. So they're watching, they're keeping track on it, and the whole works. It also helps having these people, these repeat customers who buy multiple items all the time, it helps to have that, that knowledge in your head. So when you're out in the wild, you already know you've got people that will buy specific things. It's so much easier to keep customers and bring in a couple new ones to add to that fold constantly than it is to try and get new customers every single day of the week for everything. If you're just selling rando, random stuff, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's extremely hard to keep those types of customers as repeat customers. So every item you have out there turns into a cost of acquisition for a customer for that specific item. But if you already have those customers, you already have people who keep coming back or you've built that up, that's the way to go, in my opinion, to keep that steady. It's less work, it's less investment into promotions, it's less work into advertising or pushing or all that other junk that goes with it. They're going to want those items. And the other key factor in what we sell and a reason why we, we do it is because the majority of everything I sell, and I've said this before, is, is meaningless to most people. It, it's not needed at all. It's, it's extras. It's stuff that people have to have expendable income to be able to sink money into. And they sink a lot of good money into the types of items that we sell. Hundreds of dollars for a piece of paper, a small piece of metal, or something like that. So you've just got to know your base. You've got to keep them there. You've got to attract them. You've got to get them into a store. Picking niches, that's honestly been the best bet for us. Getting out of things that are um, uh, necessity items, again, has been good for us. Less competition better uh, a return rate, lower cost of goods. The, the return rate from you know a sold item is, is almost nil. There's a lot of benefits to selling in specific niches and knowing those niches. Niches where you're going to have people coming back and routinely buying from you. 
We've had people that have purchased a hundred different items over multiple different times, you know, months on end. And that is honestly and sincerely the best recommendation I can give you for getting those repeat customers, for increasing your sales, for keeping your sales steady and a, a decent level all the time, is to just list new items in specific niches where these collectors are coming back to get. They'll always be there. You'll get new ones. They'll stay with you if you have a lot of items. So that's why quantity for us works as well, because it's all quantity in specific niches. You know, it, it's just a large chunk of stuff that they can look through. Some of these folks who have been buying from us for five and 10 years buy stuff that's been up for five and 10 years still right now. Hopefully that gives you some thoughts, some ideas on this. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Now, here's another one of those pins. Now, this is the one that sold for 50 bucks, and as you can see, it just has a different state on it. So this one says Texas. This is the way I wrap them. There'll be bubble wrap around this, and then this will be wrapped around cardboard, and it'll go in a 1x6x9 poly bag. So really easy to ship, even though it looks dangerous. It's super easy to ship. We're looking for good flavor in sugarless gum. We're looking for a new kind of sugarless gum that's carefree. The good, good tasting sugarless gum that's carefree. Carefree is sugarless. Sugarless is carefree. You know about sugarless gum to carefree. We found good flavor in sugarless gum to carefree. It's sugarless to carefree. It's good. New carefree from Beech Nuts.